Hello everyone, in today's episode I'm joined with Ella and, and, and today me and Ella are going to be talking about um, chronic illnesses um, because uh, we're, they, they, they do really impact uh, people's lives and, and, and our lives so, so today we're going to be uh, hearing about um, Ella's chronic conditions and uh, it's going to be a, a, a really nice conversation so Ella, so thank you for like uh, coming on today Thank you for having me. Yeah, I I, I know um like uh, like we said before about uh, like chronic illnesses, but j- 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 just to start off with, if you could just introduce yourself a little bit. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I'm Ella. I'm 18 years old, and um, I'm an animal carer. Um, I love animals, mm-hmm. and um, I also do a lot of fundraising and. Yeah, I also like writing. Is that what you like to do in your spare time, like writing? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I love writing um, different speeches. I love writing poetry and trying to help people as best as I can. Yeah, yeah. And do you, because you, um, you you mentioned that you're you you like animals. Do you, do you, do you yeah. write about animals as well? yeah occasionally yeah I work um I work with rescue cats um and several different types of animals um so yeah I love animals okay yeah so I I guess you like going to the zoo as well yeah yeah Yeah, my house is like a zoo anyway but (laughs) do do you have any favorites like uh, favorite animals um yeah I love a bit random but I love giraffes and um, but I definitely love cats I've got a thing for cats because obviously I work with them so yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. it must be uh, like uh, as they're uh, like you 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 really like cats so it must be like a like a job that you enjoy yeah definitely it's really rewarding it's I, I do I do get excited about going to work so it's it's a nice job yeah, yeah. I'm very lucky yeah. it, it, it's good when you have like a job that you can go to that you enjoy because yeah um not everyone does like have a job that they like or or, or um enjoy so it's good that exactly. you, you, you have that yeah it really is yeah I'm really blessed to have that um so yeah it's definitely a positive in my life yeah yeah and like um with um like like uh, like like with uh, the zoo do, 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 do you have like a, a season pass because I, I know you can get like like I think season tickets is it for for the zoo where you can you have a, a, a pass for the year do do it do, do, yeah do you have one of them um, I don't at the moment. I have done in the past. Um, I get a bit too upset, too obsessive, and just live there otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's lovely. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I, I like the zoo, but I, I, I think it's great when you don't go for a, a while and then go there. Um, because, yeah. Because if you go there a lot of the time, like maybe every week, um, it, it doesn't feel the same. I suppose and go going yeah. like a, in a few months time yeah totally I completely agree it's so true yeah but my, my favorite animals I like um I like the monkeys <laughs> I, oh uh, yeah I, yeah um I like I do like the giraffes I like I like most of them um I was, yeah I, it's hard not to like an animal but um yeah it's uh mm-hmm. because of the pandemic haven't been able to go I suppose not as yeah. much as you would have wanted, but um, hopefully this year uh, is a bit more normal than uh, fingers uh, crossed. Than yeah, it will be good. Yeah, yeah hopefully. Yeah. yeah. But um, st- going on to like the uh, chronic illness, Ella. If you would just like to uh, maybe explain and uh, talk about uh, the, the, the what affects you for having a chronic illness. Um, yeah, so um, unfortunately, as many of us with chronic illness have multiple illnesses, um, I, I suffer with really bad seizures that are thankfully at the moment quite controlled. Um, 
and I suffer with really stretchy connective tissue which affects a lot of my organs so I have problems with my my stomach my bladder um, and things like that um obviously with any illness there's going to be negatives it's going to affect your life in different ways um but obviously there is positives to it um but yeah I think my biggest thing is kind of other people you get a lot of people not understanding um people think I don't know you're like deliberately avoiding going out or things like that when obviously they don't go through it so that's what I find the most difficult I think yeah yeah it is it is quite hard when like I'm supposed to explain to someone that hasn't got themselves yeah because um like I I don't go like I don't go blabbing about my chronic illness to my friends because I know they don't have it so they're not maybe going to take it as seriously as me yeah yeah Yeah, you're amazing anyway I think I don't I mean for anyone who suffers with an illness is amazing but to keep it kind of like like take it on all on board all by yourself and go out there and it's just really really brave to do yeah yeah it is um I suppose it takes time to speak about it because um like I wouldn't want to speak about it straight away I suppose it it does take time to suppose you to understand it yourself Mm -hmm. yeah yeah it's yeah it's it's hard it's I always when I meet people sometimes I don't want to kind of scare them away by saying things Mm. um obviously with things like epilepsy it's hard because when you go out with someone you kind of want to warn them just in case something was to happen um but at the same time even just that word sometimes just makes people want to back off so it's quite it's quite difficult yeah yeah and like I um I I don't like people to feel sorry like for me or, or anything like that yeah. like, um, but I do uh, like people to understand as well uh, um, but because like we choose to speak about it because uh, we want to <laughs> yeah um, but like we, we don't have to talk about it at all do we we're, we're, we're just not but I think it's easier when we do because it just helps us and I suppose it gains confidence to help others yeah yeah this is it this is um obviously I I do speak about it on social media to try and help other people um but then you get kind of people who think you're just saying talking about it for attention and then there's people who obviously you're trying to target the people that are going through it and people that don't understand but yeah it is hard yeah. but yeah it's pretty uh it's pretty tough to um speak about it on social media as well when, um, yeah I suppose people who you don't know everyone who who's seen your posts um mm-hmm. and yeah but it is um it's like I didn't straight away I, I um probably last no not last year 2020 <laughs> in 2020 oh it's so confusing <laughs> <No>. <laughs> yeah yeah still can't oh. believe it's 2022 but um, I know I can't yeah come so fast isn't it I know it's scary oh, I can't even think of the days of the week at the moment <laughs> no it feels like I think because of the festive period it feels like every day is a Saturday until, yeah until you go back to like your normal routine like going to work college people who go to university schools um yeah it doesn't seem the same and I suppose it gets I in your mind you think I, I don't want to go back I've had so mm-hmm. nice relaxing time yeah oh I know yeah. it's always like that when you have to like break the routine you've just got into but yeah. um once you get back into the swing of it it seems to be okay yeah yeah you get to probably see people that you haven't uh at work for example um probably see people that you haven't maybe over the last couple of weeks um yeah it does seem ages ago <laughs> um, yeah it really uh, does I think it was at end of December time most people did but um hopefully like um like it's a new year and new things exciting things to happen um 
and with like COVID as well, maybe that will hopefully calm down. Oh, I hope so. Yeah. 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 Fingers so, crossed. Fingers crossed. And that's another thing with a chronic illness. Um, like um, like the because you can get vulnerable depending what how bad you are. Um, like um, yeah. like maybe take different medication that would dampen your immune system. Yeah. That which which helps the condition that you have. Um, but um, it's also annoying at the same time knowing a pandemic is about and that if you caught that potentially it could be quite really bad for you. Yeah. Yeah, it's it is scary. Do you find it difficult? Um, to... Yeah. Like yeah. I feel like like because my my friends don't are not as risk as me. So they'll go out and about together. Not, yeah. Not worrying really about the pandemic. Uh, or I suppose they would worry about but not be as like careful as if they were at risk. Um, yeah. Like not like probably people like me and you that are probably more careful about like anyway, yeah. even before the pandemic, it was always a it's always a risk anyway. Yeah, exactly. It's very hard because people say um, sometimes to me, oh, you're so over the top. You're so like, you're so funny about germs and things. And I'm like, yes, I am. Because because of having like a really weak immune system, I just pick up things so quickly. And that's like, that's it. And it's it can be a lot worse for us. Um, obviously, I, could, I think they'd have to go through it to actually understand properly. Yeah. 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 Yeah, but um, yeah, it's 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 not a uh, like there was a time last year that I was like, COVID was getting a little bit bad, but I wanted to do something with my friends, and there was this I think this is a range football match that there was, and um, everyone said they were taking natural flow tests, and some people were saying they don't need it, they don't need to take it, and um, really a natural flow test is it's, mm. it's okay, but it's not. Like it's just a, I suppose, a guess and the test really, um, because it's not like one hundred percent sure. Which, um, yeah, I didn't go in the end, but it, it's just, it's just annoying that you have to not do things just because of your health, but your health yeah. is most important. Yeah, exactly, and it's even putting aside COVID, it's when like things can change so quickly you can be perfectly fine and then all of a sudden you get a really bad flare-up or something and that's hard for people to understand as well a lot of people think you're just cancelling plans for for the fun of it or like you just can't be bothered it's not it's not like that at all but obviously there's a lot of things that people I guess won't understand until they like suffer the same thing Mm. sadly yeah Unfortunately, but um, like I, uh, it's it's hard for I suppose them to understand because, like, I probably wouldn't if I didn't have it, or take it as seriously because. But uh, yeah. But you have the friends that do under uh, have a better understanding, and uh, even though they don't have it themselves, but they might have a bit better understanding. To yeah, definitely. How it affects you, or like you can't see people. Um, you, you ask people to wear masks because they don't have to anymore which um which um social and keeping distances and so all, all, all that stuff which um that's happened yeah yeah it's yeah it's, it is hard I don't think if I wasn't in the situation if I didn't have the conditions I have I don't think obviously I would completely get it either but mm. um yeah, no, it's it's hard, but I guess it's just about being like aware and being kind to people, not judgmental when people just don't get it. But yeah, yeah, yeah unfortunately not. <laughs> but, yeah, um, but I, uh, I, I, I always have like I don't like feeling down about it. Um, like having them or having like, a chronic illness, like, uh, but. I do like to have a laugh about it, not in a bad way. Say you're not in a flare and um, yeah. like you can't make something or um, any, you say because like Crohn's, for example, because that's my chronic illness. 
I'll say oh, I can't go because of my Crohn's and then so some people will go along with a certain joke but um, it, 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 there are times where I suppose when you have a chronic illness you can have a laugh about it and then there are times you have to be more serious. Yeah yeah no I completely agree I'm the same I, I do like some of my friends do um, like make jokes about my health and things and I laugh along with it and that's it's obviously it's great it's you have to laugh or you cry um, but then there's obviously the times where people will like insult you and make jokes and obviously that's not really nice but um, no it's good to have a laugh from time to time yeah yeah, we can't always be uh, be sad about it, can we? <laughs> no, <laughs> drive us crazy. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I suppose at the start, that was probably the hardest part. Um, yeah. Getting diagnosed, how you got diagnosed, how long it took you got diagnosed. But um, that, well, for me, that was probably the toughest part. And I got told I had Crohn's and then I don't know what a clue it is. <laughs> I thought, yeah. Um, I thought I've only got it for a certain oh, amount of time and then I didn't yeah. realise there's no cure for it. So I uh, had to deal with it, I suppose. And um, at that time, I was at school. So that would have been in 2017. So I would have uh, getting ready to do exams, I was. Um, and I uh, couldn't do them. Well, I did do them. School was just understanding because I couldn't go in. But um, I was yeah. lucky enough I did do them later um so more, more better really that no one's in the room so I was just there me and my own doing it <laughs> oh well you're amazing to like do what you do now it's like it's very hard but especially when you feel kind of like you're the only one that is going through that as well um obviously there's lots of other people out there that have the same thing that are really lovely and understanding everything huh? yeah I think I think it's great like just talking about it um you get lots of I put lots of people who are nice as well that, yeah um, that are sharing their journeys as well where um like I think it's great when I when you see those different people that like to share their stories and tell other people about it because um then you think um not everyone does but if they if you not realizing what you're saying or making a post talking about it, talking about it now um that you're helping someone that you probably don't know who but hopefully you are yeah oh well you're definitely helping a lot of people so you should be really proud of yourself yeah i think you're you're, you're helping lots of people as well um Ella, oh, I see thank you I saw all the different things that you, you like to do like you, you like to do your fundraising like um be uh raise awareness as well I think you, you I think you should be proud of yourself because um uh, it's it's great oh thank you oh. yeah like it's it's not everyone um does like to do it and like it's just I suppose at first you're outside your comfort zone speaking to someone um about it and um and like coming on a podcast as well can be I suppose pretty tough for like even like you, because um I talk to people about all different things as well and I, I wasn't really confident so um years ago so um I think talking about your conditions does help you more confident yeah definitely it does and when you get nice feedback from people um it does kind of like boost you up a bit because obviously when I post something I get like a brief moment where I sit there I reread it I look at it and think oh my gosh should I post this should I delete it but when you get the comments and things it it makes it all worthwhile and to know that you are helping people is really rewarding yeah yeah get people around the world as well um yeah quite cool yeah I didn't realize there was lots of people around the world as well but um that had uh these conditions but uh, yeah it's, me too it's it's nice it, yeah it is it, it is amazing because obviously like 
I've met lots of people who have the same well similar same conditions as well and it it's just nice sometimes to just be able to just go on like go off on one about it and have them just say yeah like I completely get that that's the same as me and stuff and then you feel like you're not alone so that's nice yeah yeah and even if people don't have the same conditions as you they uh, they do understand because if they yeah. have similar ones um that they will have an idea i suppose yeah right yeah uh, I, I, what you go through and and like how you want to go about things yeah yeah it's good and yeah it's, it's very difficult because i really i really struggle with my confidence personally and i, I don't come across like it because I do obviously put videos and um, talking and things like that but um yeah it's just really difficult because I constantly look at myself and think oh no it's too embarrassing I look terrible everything just looks awful um but trying to just like push yourself out out of your comfort zone as well is quite good because it, then it kind of gives other people the motivation to try and do it if that makes sense I'm probably rambling on about rubbish oh, <laughs> no, yeah. I, I know what you mean because like you see the, the videos that you do and you look confident and um yeah and like like it, if you didn't say that we wouldn't know that you you, you was a bit shy and a bit confident uh, less confident sorry but um I think the, the the more you do it the more confident that you'll get um yeah I uh I wasn't confident when I was younger I uh I wasn't confident at all <laughs> I uh Aww. I uh like I was at school I wouldn't ask for help if I needed it because I was worried what other people would think if they knew what they were doing and I didn't yeah me too but um, but now I seem to not to uh, not too fuss what other people think now. Yeah, good. It's the best way to be. I I spend most of my life just sitting there worrying about what other people think. But at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter as long as you're like comfortable in your skin and you're happy. That's the main thing. Yeah, I think that's it. Because like I uh I like. I like if a teacher would uh, like just come across you would say oh, I know what I'm doing and <laughs> you have a, a sheet yeah. full of guesses or a piece mm -hmm. of writing I suppose a piece of writing is easier because you can especially if you can make your own story um, um, you can do it based on what you want like whenever I used to do something I'd base it around my hobbies um, like Doctor for example or, or, or other little things but it's just like like now like not worrying what people think is the best way to be because if you do you're gonna it's gonna make you feel probably down and <laughs> yeah you don't want that no I know the feeling in school it's very difficult especially with maths <laughs> just have to pretend yeah. you get it yeah maths isn't yeah with maths isn't the easiest oh so difficult <laughs> but I did a I think it's, I, I did it I like my teacher when I was at school taught me maths he uh yeah me too um, I think it's good when you when you like a teacher that teaches subject um yeah yeah because if you don't like them you're not going to enjoy the subject um <laughs> exactly um but but like I wasn't the brightest of maths either um uh, but oh. at least we know what one times one or those two little things but um, <laughs> yeah um, um but yeah it was like you got um bid bass uh we oh, <laughs> don't get that at all <laughs> x x times one or oh. <laughs> it's terrible my whole class would understand it and i'd be like oh yeah really easy <laughs> oh too yeah complicated <laughs> teacher would come over right and and, and ask you like you know <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah oh but oh. Oh, I suppose you're really well in English <laughs> you, you like your English <laughs> yeah that's about the only thing that I can do <laughs> but yeah. yeah 
Yeah. What was your favorite subject at school? Um, uh, I liked PE. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't do it. <laughs> I suppose because I'm a sporty person and I like sports, but um, uh, subject wise, um, I did I preferred English, even though apparently at exams I did better in maths. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how that worked. Oh, um, I bet you were good at like everything. I'm, mm-hmm. I was terrible. <laughs> um, I did science. I I did um, yeah. art. Art was a uh, very hard to concentrate on that. I did. Uh, I did the two day exam. So, it, oh gosh, like one day do, doing this piece of artwork, and I thought it was rubbish at art, and um, like. Uh, it would be so quiet if you say a sound you can't say a sound because it's a sound and of course paint you got you paint and drawing and all that and I was actually quite proud <laughs> of myself when I did it because I didn't think it would come out as well as well as it did um oh, well spend, done. spend like half hour just staring <laughs> I think yeah it um and then teachers to come over say do you know what you do? <laughs> and then <laughs> which was it was quite fun, funny, but I did the art exam. Did I did ICT, um, uh, which was tough <laughs> on the computers. Uh, uh, yeah. Drama, probably. I really liked drama. Yeah, I did drama as well. Drama I don't know was, how. Yeah. I used to freak out every performance, but yeah. yeah, it was good. That that was the one where well. I, when I got diagnosed with Crohn's was when I was practicing to do drama and because when I left or when I was doing drama I think that's the last year to do drama in the school where I was at because they changed the exam and it was it was hard for other people to do it so it was more of a writing exam than a acting um, one which uh probably for you as you, as you like your writing <laughs> you're right there <laughs> <laughs> um, um but the thing was is that you had to write about a, a play that you've never done. That 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 was um, what you had to do. So oh yeah, had, we was allowed to watch it. I think yeah, we was allowed to watch it, but you wasn't allowed to uh, do it. So what we did was uh, we read it, and I think everyone did pass. Um, I just rambled on. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm good at. <laughs> yeah. If they say you write loads and then you just ramble on about similar things, I suppose you do yeah. right there. Um, <laughs> and but for the drama bit, this is when I was diagnosed. I went to have tests about seeing what was wrong. Right, so I not meant too many people were happy about me being gone from drama. Um, yeah, because uh, the science teachers it was quite funny. Um, so it, it, if you're away from a lesson like science, for example, uh, the teacher would be like, uh, uh, "What?" Why are you not in science? <laughs> it would be quite <laughs> funny at that time. But um, I wasn't in drama and there was only about six or seven of us because no one else could... Uh, um, it, it was the luck, it was luck of the draw, I suppose. Like, uh, um, it was the, probably the, the better actors during the year group because there's the whole year group doing the drama course. Um, but they had to be scrapped, really, for, from it. Um, I don't think the teacher was being mean, but um, someone had to... Some people... Want, needed to do it and some people would take it probably more seriously and some people didn't want to do it so it was more easy for the people who didn't want to do it not to do it um but I, I was picked as um one of the actors um in in this play um which I was I would say I say I'm the most important character but um I'm like nothing to the other actors or I say actors the other people who took part I, I was a minor role character, so I played quite a lot of people. So, all, like, with everyone else, I only played a character each. Um, and when I was gone, <laughs> they, they didn't know what to do, really, Aww. because I was uh, in hospital and I was seeing what was going on. Um, and I did still go, I did go into school when I was in pain. Um, it was burning mm-hmm. feeling in my stomach and uh, they couldn't do anything about it. At school, I got asked to go to the library to chill. I said, I don't really want to go to the library because I'm going to get asked why I'm in it by other members of staff that come in. Um, so, yeah. Uh, and uh, really, I said, I can't be asked to deal with them and potentially send yeah. me to get out. 
<laughs> but uh, but and then another thing I got asked to go to have some paracetamol and said that's not going to help me <laughs> unfortunately I hope so I hope it would do but uh, yeah but but the thing yeah. I, I did enjoy doing the drama I really enjoyed it like um a teacher um came up to see me when he saw it he said uh, I was one of his favorite micro characters that he's seen um Aww. through drama so that was quite good um and I, I probably would like to do more drama but I think the pandemic just puts everything on hold yeah and, like you can't really do much and you're in contact with people aren't you um and that's that was a bummer really but I did enjoy that and I it was fun Oh, hopefully if COVID settled up, settles down a bit, you can get back into it. Yeah. It'll be really good. So. Yeah, like I like um coaching. I did do some football coaching before um pandemic. Uh, yeah. Like a coach when I was in part of primary school, he came to teach he did like do, do some P lessons, football coaching and that. And then as I got older, I went to his football camps and I played in that and then I decided I well I asked as well that I could be a helping coach uh, there and uh, like I'm go- I could potentially work with them now because I'm old enough <laughs> <laughs> because every year I said it, 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 uh, how about a job like if I, if I work for you guys and then said uh, are you 20 are you 20 or oh, I've got to be a certain age to do it and then now I'm in that age or in that age range, I can do it. So I think they are the two things I like doing. Like in my spare time, I will like to act different things. Yeah. And I guess it's nice sometimes to just like, um, like escape into a different character that's not your own, like your own person sometimes. Yeah. 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 Like, oh, it's lovely. Like, like I like to... At Doctor Who, cause, uh, I like playing different characters on there. Um, I like, um, I just like doing that um, in my spare time. I haven't done any this year, uh, only because I got I've done lots of videos um, last year and quite a lot in my drafts actually. <laughs> but um, <laughs> um, so probably that will probably last me a year, but I still do more just because I want it. But. But yeah, I think finding stuff to do, what you're interested in is like, like it's, it's, it's important. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it really is. That's why I love animals. They just give me, um, they just give me like a focus and somewhere to like escape to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think it's like another world, I suppose, like, like you're in cat, yeah. cat world. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Is that um like is that like your was that your dream job to be um like work well, with cats or or or, or 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 like when you were younger did you have any other dream jobs that you had in mind? Um, my all time dream is to become a vet. Um. I did my first year at college and I'm on a gap year at the moment because I find it found it really hard. Um, one with chronic illness and two with um, obviously because my dad became very unwell last year. Um, I'm hoping I can go back this year um, in September, but it really depends on my health and things. Um, but yeah, I'm still training to be a vet, I hope. Fingers crossed. It's just a long way yeah thank you yeah yeah do yeah. you have a dream yeah I, I, my dream is to uh, uh well when I was younger it was to be a football commentator but I don't think I want to do that now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um but I I like be a football coach um to be like acting in I suppose different things uh that the, they're my dream jobs now like to be on Doctor Who would be a nice job of mine um, like hard jobs like uh, actors don't see when you watch actors on the TV they, 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 it doesn't seem too hard to them it's just like you're watching day to day life like if you watch soaps that is like uh, you're, you're watching day to day life 
uh, not all uh, uh, doesn't all seem completely uh, like what would happen sometimes. Sometimes they spend like a storyline on a year <laughs> and um, <laughs> take forever. But um, I'm not the one to watch soaps anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I just, I don't really watch much TV anymore, but yeah. Yeah. I just read forever. You like reading? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm a book nerd. <laughs> <laughs> but too many books. Yeah. It, well, w- would you ever like to be a writer? Yeah, um, I hope so. I hope I can... Um, write a story and get it published but it's so difficult but yeah. um yeah it would be nice yeah yeah like I, I would like to write I'm not I could write my own book but uh help us uh, uh, I'd like someone to help me to maybe write a, like maybe chronic illness or crone story or something like that because yeah. uh, I see other people that have, have their own books published which are, are good but I'm not one to read books <laughs> I don't know like, <laughs> like like even in school I would get distracted like if I'm reading a book I wouldn't know where we are or, 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 or what's happening in, in the book because I, I get too yeah. distracted like um I'll be there I'll be thinking about someone else in my head like I, I'm like uh what I'm gonna do for the rest of the day or I'm gonna do this next I'm gonna do that and then I forget what's happening in the story and the teachers ask me <laughs> uh what, what happened like why has Joseph uh, climbed over the wall or something like that? And I'll say, I, I suppose, I guess I'll say, because he wanted to, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm more of a film person. Well, I, I'm a, like, for Harry Potter's, the books, for example, I wouldn't read them. I'd, I, yeah. I would watch them, but I wouldn't read. I'd read a small book, maybe, N- not a big one. Yeah, no, that's fair enough. Everyone's different. Yeah. But yeah, no, I can get what you mean. Because sometimes I can read like a whole book and I'll just be, my mind will be elsewhere. And I'll finish the book and I'll be like, I don't have a clue what I've just read about. <laughs> it's, it's hard when you've got a lot going on as well. Yeah, I suppose when you have a lot going on and you're thinking about that, that'd be a perfect book. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just write what's going on. <laughs> yeah I forget it <laughs> yeah but yeah oh. that, that that could be something you could do like um in like the future maybe um or if you're like you could be an English teacher maybe um possibly uh if you're re- really like English and writing yeah that's a really good idea <laughs> yeah yeah I know uh I, I, I wouldn't be an English teacher, but because I've actually, before the pandemic started, I think in 2019, I got um, a coaching qualification. Um, I did an FA level one co- coaching course. And I, uh, I did all, every week, um, every weekend it was, I went to do these different things, to be a coach. So I, a qualified coach now but um so I did the I had to do first aid um which uh because I, I I suffered my joints as well so like if I did like say football for example I tried my really best um I've, I've, I've been so achy I would like next few days mm, yeah uh, but um but yeah I did the first aid and like you had the, the defib uh, as well so like um like practicing that and like it's those things you have to have when you're a coach or a PE or something to do with PE yeah yeah I took a first aid course a while back um it's really obviously handy to have one like know everything as well yeah. um yeah it's hard to remember as well yeah oh it really is sometimes yeah so many things are like similar as well it's quite confusing that's what worries me if something was to happen to somebody I'd get so scared I'd do it all wrong and cause more problems <laughs> yeah yeah it is it is um that would be a tough like situation 
um, yeah. But um, I, I I remember once uh, I, when I was younger, I, I was a bit silly. I uh, I went to um, a caravan park and I went on my bike and um, <laughs> I was went down that, that, that you know the, the you know you know next to your caravans you have the the, the railings just behind them and yeah I, I wanted to go on this bike down this hill and I I, I whacked myself into the work railing I didn't stop oh, gosh. <laughs> um and ambulance call um and apparently I was bleeding really bad oh, um, and gosh. um and they uh mom, and then my mum said I, I was I'd say I had lots of blood and then I, I take it to hospital so that that was a not very smart move of me, um, but I felt like like you can't really feel the blood. I couldn't, but it was uh, not a very smart thing of me. I was very young, so uh, yeah. Um, but I thought in my head, oh my I gosh. thought I could have ducked behind the railings or something like that. <laughs> but um, but wasn't smart. <laughs> Oh, I guess in that moment you don't really think about it. No. Oh gosh, <laughs> sounds yeah. awful. Yeah, yeah, there is different accidents that you can have, uh, and uh, yeah. and, and that's why people are there to have get that first day training, and yeah, and yeah, but with a uh, with chronic illnesses, it can like um like run in the family I think as well yeah does it run in your family um some of my health problems um my mum has got so um like it's kind of like like some like female kind of health issues have obviously come from my mum um but a couple of them they say that with my joints it's actually genetic but as far as we know, no, not that anyone I know has it. <clears throat> that doesn't make any sense. But like, we don't know anybody that's had it in the family. But obviously, someone supposedly has. Um. But yeah, how about you? Does yours? Um. No one has uh like Crohn's disease at all in my family. But um, they do have all, all yeah. people have had like quite a lot of bowel issues and autoimmune diseases. Um. Yeah. That are in the same boat I suppose as Crohn's but different but of autoimmune but yeah. not not Crohn's um but um which like I at that moment I thought like I know people that have had like Crohn's for example and they've known a little bit about it beforehand so that's handy and like in my position I had no clue <laughs> so um yeah um I kind of had to learn about it at the start and had the kind of had the kind of lottery to get diagnosed, so um, yeah, it's, it's yeah, it's, yeah, no, it's it's very hard. Um, I mean, obviously, I've got problems with my stomach. It's obviously a different thing, but um, originally they thought I had Crohn's as well. Um, but um, yeah, I didn't have a clue what it was either until they said and they explained about it and some of the things that I've been diagnosed with I just I can't even say to be honest the words are just like ridiculous um but yeah no it's yeah. I guess it's nice it's nice when people understand but at the same time like if they ha if they've had it or have it but at the same time it's horrible they have to go through it as well yes yeah, it's, it's hard isn't it like um just talking about it to I suppose when you go to your work you, you like yeah. inform them um yeah and hopefully they understand um what like, the different chronic illnesses that you have and like maybe yeah. different things that you might need to do um mm. like fatigue is a big symptom in chronic illness uh get yeah. very tired um uh do you do, do, do you find that like do you get quite tired from fatigue yeah uh, that's probably one of my worst kind of symptoms is just constantly I have no energy at all um and yeah that's awful do you get it bad then yeah yeah I uh so yeah. I got if I went out for the day or 
go to class 40. Um, I would go to sleep when I go home. <laughs> uh, oh, bless you. In, in college, there was one time I played football uh, inside um, and they were doing this little fo- football tournament and I, I needed to set out. I was so achy and tired oh. and I was about to go to sleep <laughs> just on this oh, bench. Okay. Um, and the teacher said, uh, are you not going to play? I said, I've played for the last, uh, last many of games. Um, uh, I think the winner stays on it was they played like that. And my team was keep winning. <laughs> um, probably because I, I, everyone passes me the ball and I just run, run past everyone and shoot and score. So um, uh, I don't like letting people win. Um, <laughs> I'm quite <laughs> competitive. But um, at this point, I was too tired to carry on. I said... M- m- it was, it was a final match or something like that. And then the teacher said, um, I might go let my team down. And I couldn't be asked to get into a debate mm. about it. Um, I yeah. said, uh, I couldn't be asked. He knows, he, he does not have crimes, but he probably doesn't understand what I mean. Yeah. Um, so I said, fine, I'll carry on, but I'll, I will yeah, just, I'll, so- I won't do much. Um, I think my team lost in the end, but uh, yeah. Um, it wasn't uh, ideal, but I did, I did feel quite tired about that. Oh, I think that's definitely what people don't get. They, they say, like, they know what the illness is, but they don't know what it causes and what it, kind of, like, what symptoms and side effects that you get from it. Yeah. Pretty tough. Yeah. Yeah. Parentheses, yeah. IBD, chronic illnesses in a whole while. Not nice. But... Yeah. Uh, no. Do you uh, do you take any like medication at all like, for yours? Yeah, yeah, I take a lot of medication, um, which is another thing I get lectured a lot about. Um, I actually I went live on Instagram once, um, and they were asking me different questions, and they'd asked me if I was on this set of medication, and I said um, I was, and I was told oh you shouldn't be on that at your age that's too that's too strong for you um you're gonna get addicted you're gonna get even more sick and I just I just thought like it's not really your place it's my doctor has my consultant has given this to me and he wouldn't have put me on it if he thought it was bad um and obviously you get people that say oh you're on too much medication you're only 18 and you shouldn't be on any but like it's helping me it's keeping me going so yeah yeah how about you yeah yeah I um I do take medication um I take um quite a bit uh I think I take I have a box I have a box Monday to Sunday uh, about to say Friday, <laughs> uh, Sunday. Again, <laughs> uh, um, Sunday and Sunday. Um, <laughs> but I have tablets in there every day, and like I have asthma as well, so I take that. I know I have allergies, yeah. so I take my allergy medicine as well. Um, and I am actually allergic to cats. <laughs> but um, oh, are you? Oh. But but I'm not as bad as I used to be. Like if I'm oh. um, if I'm in a room with a, a, a person that has a cat, I'll just get a bit itchy now. Yeah. Uh, so I can cope. I suppose it depends what kind of cat. Uh, uh, if I'm like when I was younger, uh, I think I had a uh, allergic reaction to cats and um, oh. um, and I am allergic to nuts um, and oh, food, gosh. but not as bad as some people. Like I can eat things that say may contain nuts. Like I do. I I can do that. Um, but um, funny enough, I do like um, like co- coconut, <laughs> so like um, I don't mind that. Yeah. Um, like pollen trees, like uh, like that's to do with my allergies as well. But um, mm. that's all not to do with Crohn's or or all that. But for, for my Crohn's, I take vitamin D at B twelve, help with fatigue. Uh, yeah. Um, I use a fireprin, which is quite high, mm-hmm. uh, high high dose of like dampest immune system that does really um yeah and humiral which is a, a, a biologic which cancer patients take so that is uh quite high as well 
put you at risk. Like I presume that the, the medications you do as well, um, that, that, that would put you at risk. Um, depending yeah. on how, what they are. Yeah, it's, there's a lot of different medications and it's also hard because obviously some, some drugs interact with each other, but when you need them both, that's quite hard as well. So, um, yeah, it's always kind of like an issue. And whenever I end up having to get an ambulance out to me to take me to hospital, I get sometimes um, the paramedics say, why are you on these two medications together? And I'm like, oh, well, the doctor put me on them. And they say, well, no, you shouldn't be on them together. So there's so many people that say different things as well. And it's just like, you just want to rip your hair out sometimes because it's just like, can just one person tell me something to stick to? But yeah that's it you shouldn't like but uh, like that person you said on your instagram live um was that it was that instagram live just you talking or, or, or was you talking to someone else um i was i was it was actually on epilepsy okay. um i did it joint with one of my friends we were just talking answering questions okay yeah it, it, yeah it, it's right when you said that it's not someone else's place to uh say you're on too much medication because it is helping you yeah. but you probably would feel better or like if you was on none because you may yeah. put you less at risk but at the same time you don't want to be in pain yeah this is this is it this is kind of the like I guess it's even like with um strong painkillers and things like obviously yes they can be addictive but at the end of the day it's that or be in bed <laughs> for mm. the whole day so yeah. yeah, I was um. There was time I wasn't. I went. I went to hospital because I I couldn't walk, um, oh. and I don't know why. No, I never found out the reason. I was on there for I couldn't walk, and then and, and when I decided to walk there, I, I was tried to, even though I was probably limping. Um, um, they were going to put you know the, the the injection they put in if you you're not moving for a long time, they put just to flow your blood. Um, oh yeah. Yeah. I decided yeah. I'm I've no more medicine. I don't want any more injections. <laughs> I'm gonna gonna try and walk. <laughs> um and I I did they never found out what was wrong, but that was that, that was a mystery that was. Oh no, it's really hard. It's it's oh that sounds awful. I can't imagine how awful that is. It's, yeah, yeah. It's, it's it's terrible and you get a symptom as well when you've got multiple health issues going on and you sit there and you think is it this that's flaring up or is it this problem? What one is it? <laughs> it's just like, it's, oh, it is, it is a nightmare. When you say you went to for an emergency, would they bring you into A&E? Like... Yeah, um, it really depends. Like I usually, um, well, I say I get ambulances quite quickly. Sometimes the wait obviously is ridiculous, but that's just the way it is at the moment. Um, but yeah, it depends what it is. They usually take me into a &E or resource, depending on the problem. But, yeah. You know, I think like people with chronic illnesses should, should be taken into A&E because it's not like a, it's not more accident. Yeah. And it's not an accident really. It's just. I agree. Flaring up. So like I, yeah. when I was there, I was waiting for ages and um, mm. I needed a blood test. This guy took it and he, uh, he put it he didn't put it in right and I, I was oh, not saying gosh. nothing I was I was crying and I, I, I never really cry in front of people I, I like to cry <laughs> not in front of people um oh. put hold it in but I couldn't and she uh well he didn't do it right and he didn't uh his uh his helper come to say sorry and he didn't I suppose he didn't because I'm not happy with him but um apparently yeah. his experience but I don't know what he did there. It's so frustrating, but I do agree with you. I think there should be, even if, like, I've got wards that I'm on quite often that the nurses know me, and sometimes it's so it's so ridiculous because they take take you straight into A and E, and I say to them, I know I'm going to end up there, so why don't you just take me straight down, and you like you'll have more space here, but they won't. It's pointless. <laughs> Uh, I just wait for everyone else, but it shouldn't be like that. But yeah, you no, can't, you can't do much 
about that. But no. unless just putting it forward to like people that yeah. can help you. But that's it. But like yeah. like with like with medication, it's it's tough being on it. Um yeah. We don't really want to. Like I, I wouldn't no. if I like but helping helps reduce pain, that's the main thing. And I always say yeah. to my consultant when I see him, um, I'm not gonna have surgery yet because probably will one day um because I, I haven't had surgery um I, I've, have you had surgery at all um or? yeah I've had a couple and I'm on the list to have more um mainly on my stomach and bladder but yeah yeah, yeah. it must be hard like ha- like just knowing that and, and knowing that you're gonna have to have it again yeah yeah it's it's scary when obviously when you're about to go in and they obviously have to tell you the risks but that is quite scary but yeah yeah, yeah. last year I had a sigmoidoscopy and I um I, of course they tell you the risk beforehand and said that there's a, there's a possibility that you might need to go into emergency, emergency surgery and my mum oh. said I, I don't want to know that <laughs> I don't want to know. <laughs> but yeah but I didn't I didn't um I had the gas in there uh, this time because it it wasn't the the whole bowel it was just a little half. But I just kept having the gas in there because it makes you high. So I thought, Why not? yeah, yeah. I did the same when um obviously like when you get like the colonoscopies and things. I just sit there with the gas in there as well, and like, it does help. But yeah. yeah, I think when I had my colonoscopy, I had the uh station then the next time I had to get there um for the sigmoidoscopy and like that's that the first time I had a proper procedure since I was diagnosed so it was uh, a bit different um <laughs> um but, yeah. but we got we go through these things and, and I and I say uh to my I do say to my consultant I'm not gonna have surgery am I uh he said uh not yet uh, hopefully not yet and uh because I know I will it's it's, it's quite mm-hmm. likely I will one day like um have surgery and some something be altered, something be taken out or something like that. Oh, but uh because people with Crohn's or are quite likely if you're diagnosed long young, quite likely to have it to have, have surgery and mm. and stuff. But like and like I punch it potentially a bag one day, start a bag, which uh I like seeing people aware of awareness of it on social media. Yeah. But it's different I suppose when you have it yourself. Yeah, no, I can I can relate to that and I can understand that. I've obviously with my stomach issues, um I can't actually pronounce what it's called. Um, but mm. my like 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 my large intestine, the nerves don't work. Um and there's a lot of there was a lot of talk about um doing that as well. Um, which I'm trying to avoid it, but I don't know really sometimes it's hard because there's just like not a lot of options left yeah um but yeah obviously like I go to St Mark's um in London which is a brilliant hospital um but yeah 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 would you say that would be a last resort of having a stoma I think so yeah 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 I think that's for me as well like um just see how long can do without one or uh, yeah probably rather have surgery than um having one but you can have one by yeah. having surgery but it's just I suppose it's quite scary on top of a chronic illness it's mm-hmm. just something else added yeah um having to deal with it um of course not being like it's hard to show on social media as well like just showing yeah. different people uh which I don't know if I could do that um but no I, 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 I do I do like um I think it's great the people that do yeah so do I it's it's really it's a really brave thing to do and obviously I guess we don't really know I hope hopefully well hopefully we won't need them but if we do then I mean I don't know I guess we'd have to wait and see some people are amazing what they do though 
um I've seen people do modeling with theirs and they're just absolutely amazing so mm. um yeah yeah like, like like you had um Amy from Strictly Come Dancing that did her own show and then people on there so some people on there yeah. had stomas yeah it's great I I don't want one but uh, I prefer I like yeah. the way I like the way at the moment but I do get blood sometimes yeah. in my stools uh, yeah which it's not nice to see uh, but um, no. you don't I get used to it but you don't you shouldn't say that really uh, you get used to seeing blood but um fortunately mm. I do no it's not it's not nice at all I, I mean I can't like I I occasionally have the same thing and I think the first time it happened I rang my doctors and I was hysterical about it and I just I don't know what to do with myself it's it is quite scary I think yeah there's so many it, there's so many different reasons why you can have it as well so it's best to get there's another yeah. best option to do like bring your doctor um and see what they say um and if yeah. they if they think it's it could be something to do with like your drugs that you take maybe um like I was on my first biologic was an infusion called infliximab in the hospital and I yeah. was on that for a year and I was advised to go on Humira which I take now uh first but I decided I didn't want to go on infliximab first and I was on that a year my nut infusion had a pretty bad reaction to it oh. and I, and then I went on Humira. I've been on that ever since, really. But since then, it was a uh, like that reaction wasn't a friendly reaction. Uh, it was. Uh, I see other people on that drug that I was on doing pretty well. So it just shows that everyone has different things that work for them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, uh, everyone's bodies are different. Yeah, yeah. It'd be nice if everyone had a chronic illness, just had the same like. It just everything works for the same person and then we know yeah i yeah. know yeah 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 well, unfortunately not. no i guess we've just got to live with what we've got and try and make the most of it yeah maybe a cure one day for all the different chronic illnesses mm, be amazing yeah well, that's fingers crossed fingers crossed Heather. yeah but, um, yeah. but yeah it like just one last thing before we uh before we finish Ella. is there like um anything else you want to say maybe for other maybe people deciding to talk about like their own chronic illnesses um yeah I think definitely go ahead with it and don't be afraid to say things obviously with things like involving your stomach like IBD, IBS and um, different things it isn't obviously the nicest subject to speak about but the more you do talk about it the more you're going to help somebody else you're doing a good thing um, it's not embarrassing and just don't let anybody like affect you when they say oh you're attention seeking or crying out for help or something like that um they don't live through it and they don't understand at the end of the day so yeah yeah that's yeah. that's something I think I completely agree there Ella. and uh yeah I think like like you you're helping a lot of people with all the wonderful awareness you do um oh but, thank you yeah. so you definitely do as well your well, page is amazing well thank you and um yeah I think it's it's, it's great what you do and like you continue doing it um like like it's it's important to just help other people and like even if they don't know it yeah but yeah I think but I think it's really nice talking to you Ella and um yeah okay. you too thank you thank, uh, thank, thank you thank you so much for... sorry go ahead <laughs> no, no, I, I was just gonna say thank you for uh coming to talk today oh well, thank you for having me I've really enjoyed speaking to you thank you <laughs> <laughs>